We started the Transitioning Symposium, I think, in 2010 because we realized that there wasn't a very convenient place for all of the teachers who were working on different parts of the same puzzle to get together and share their experience, their strength, and their hope, and what they were seeing in their classrooms. Uh, because writing is common activity that unifies so much of what we try to do. It's not until you get everybody together that you start to see um, kind of an identity and a role for composition uh, unless you're pulling everyone together at the high school, the community college, and the university level. So um, when we fill that room up, uh, we really get a sense of what's going on. I think that one of the things that this video does is shows some of those reasons why that we're so excited uh, to keep coming back is because uh, much like when you walk down the hall and you talk to someone who's just taught a class and they tell you what they've done uh, or if you've been in a room where you've shared assessments of writing that goes on across our program you get excited when you see assignments that work well or you have another teacher who talks to you about something that's gone well in the class so people who who share the same goal and have learned some hard lessons have a place to, to share their insights about that. I love to write. Uh, it opens worlds for people. It can pay your bills. And it is one of, in contemporary society, it's one of the biggest um, gatekeepers for advancement. And that's at, across the board, at every level, uh, whether we're dealing with basic literacy and learning to write, a simple note like, uh, I will be here, I will not be here uh, next week to one's employer to being able to publish scientific findings as a scholar and in, uh, with advanced degrees. Uh, writing is the gatekeeper, and I don't like barriers. I, I really don't like gates at all, to be honest. <laughs> but but I, I guess it's like this. The barrier should be what we understand, not what we're able to convey about what we understand. I teach writing because I think writing is the best way for students to express what they know. Um, if, you, if you write something down, it, it uh, demonstrates uh, a depth of knowledge that just answering multiple choice questions can't. Uh, if you write something down, you own it. It becomes a part of you and retention is much longer than if you, if you just learn something for uh, a fill in the blank or multiple choice test. Uh, and if you write something down, that can translate into, into uh, knowledge that you can carry with you for the rest of your life, not just uh, for your high school career. Energy that I had. And so then I had a professor who told me that I was a writing teacher, and I thought he was crazy. And I just kept going, kind of going in that direction, and um, I just had to be told I was a writing teacher. <laughs> So why teach writing? I think one reason I'm so interested in teaching writing and in engaging with the process of writing instruction is because I've seen the value of it. Um, I was a non-traditional student. I came late into the academic setting. It's actually my second career. So in the, my professional work prior to coming into the university, I saw the value of good communication. And good communication almost always is informed by writing. I might be giving a speech or I might be giving an informal talk or presentation, but the basis of that is going to be writing. I might want to post something on a website, but the basis of what I do is going to rest on writing. As a college student, when I was working on my bachelor's degree, I worked for three years in the writing center. And it, I began working in the writing center because I needed something to do. <laughs> Not because I wanted a job or because I loved writing or English or anything. I was a biology major at the time. 
and I began because I needed something to do and I stayed for three years because I absolutely loved it. And I loved college students and I loved helping other college students figure out why they were having the problems with their writing that they were having. And so that led to a master's degree in composition and rhetoric and my job as the writing center director at ICC. I never wanted to teach writing. And I think uh, by now having this uh, career teaching writing, um, I love it. And the reason why I love it is because I struggled so much as a student with writing. And I had to learn the different ways that I could kind of, you know, be a better writer myself. And by having those struggles, I think that's what benefits me as being a teacher. So the most challenging thing about teaching writing at my institution would have to be getting students of such varied knowledge, right, of different levels of writing ability and trying to like move them all to one place. But I think that's a problem at any institution, so I don't know that that's necessarily specific to mine. I think it's a problem for writing teachers anywhere. Um, Okay, they're on so many different levels, uh, different age levels, um, just so many differences that I'm trying to steer them to a common goal, and that is to make them interested in writing so that they can think that it's important and necessary and develop to be good at it. The challenges, once you walk into a classroom, are the same. No matter where you are, students are students. And as a teacher, I still have to listen to who they are and where they are and learn from them what they need from me. And the challenges um, that I experience outside the classroom change from institution to institution. Where do you get the support? Um, do you have a strong um, support network for people who teach writing because it really has to be something that happens beyond the composition classroom for the students to really buy into it. Um, at the college level, high school, it's a task to be done and if they bring that attitude to college and they don't get support across the college, across the institution, then it's not going to happen. So I think writing across the curriculum is really important. And faculty need support too because not everyone is a writing teacher. Um, but everyone can use writing in teaching because writing can be a learning tool. When I think about opportunities, I think about the rich literary heritage of our state. I don't think many places can compare to the natural storytelling and the rich love of words of Mississippians. But unfortunately, we still have a big gap between the, those who create the writing and can read the writing well and those who, for one reason or another, usually socioeconomic, have not had opportunities and the guidance to uh, take part. And this is a big challenge for us. I think what's really cool about the students that at least I have in my classroom here at Ole Miss. So that I get a, a real mix of students, a really cool cross-section of the state. Some of the students come and they're from small towns and some are really prepared and some are from larger cities and some are from the Delta. Uh, they come from a wide variety of backgrounds and when they come to the classroom, I've got to think of you know how to teach this this incredible variety of students with different needs, but I also get to see these students with different experiences interact with one another, and I see their worldviews grow, and, and they learn from one another because they all bring something special to the classroom that they can use to teach the other students. So I, I think that's what's both challenging and really exciting about teaching here. What I wish students knew before they uh, before they come to me is that they're they're writers. 
they don't th you know they think I'm going to create a, a writer out of nothing and or that I'm going to make them a writer or that they're uh, in some cases they don't have the confidence that they that they are writers at all they're already writers and they're writers uh, of some success most of them have passed an English two writing exam that uh, you know that they had to pass in order to graduate uh, they have they have been successful writers in other classes and uh, but because they have so little confidence in their writing ability. I want them to understand that they're already writers. They're not, they're not necessarily where they need to be to, to uh, be successful in college uh, composition classes, but they're already successful writers and we just need to take what they already do well and improve on it. I wish that students knew that what they have been doing has prepared them for college even if they don't feel like they know everything already, they're not supposed to. They're coming to college because they're taking it to that next step. And what their high school teachers told them and taught them was right, and it was what they needed at the time, but that now they have to take it to the next level, and they have to move beyond um, what they learned and what they were good at when they were doing that in high school, and now learn the next step, learn the college level. I think that students think that college is like college on television where you sit in the big lecture hall and the professor talks and you take notes and I wish they knew that a college writing class doesn't look like that, that what it looks like instead is that you come to class and you do a lot more of the talking than I do so that it becomes this conversation instead of you just sort of sitting back passively. So I spend a lot of my time in the first semester teaching the format of the class almost more than I teach the material of the class. That I want them to succeed and that I'm there to help them, not to trip them up. Um, and that if they don't understand something, they need to ask me. Um, that I want them to ask questions and to talk. And um, next, I want them to work. Uh, they will have to work, but that it will pay off. And they need to be able to move beyond any kind of limitations they put on themselves. Um, the way they think about themselves as writers, I usually want. Um, I wish they knew that it was like, uh, you know, it's a safe place to be at. I have a lot of students who are very self-conscious about their writing. I'm not a good writer, you know, um, and these sorts of things. And, and for them to know that it's okay not to be a very good writer as long as you're trying to be a, a better writer. Um, and that you shouldn't feel ashamed of wherever you're at when you come into the classroom. That you should just try to improve and then that's, that's the goal right? and, and sort of um, to feel safe and not, not feel sort of threatened by the, by the subject. always have a plan B, right? Technology sometimes doesn't work. Instructions that you think are clear sometimes really aren't. And sometimes an activity that you think will take 35 minutes is over in 15, and then you're sort of standing there at the front of a classroom wondering, what in the world do I do with the rest of this time to make it useful? So I learned really quickly to prioritize lessons so that, okay, I have the important concepts that I have to teach, and then there's two or three things that if we have time, I really want to get to, and that's made the stress of that moment when the activity's over much easier to get through and we can just move on to the next thing. And I wish someone had said this to me when I started teaching, which is that you're not an expert right now. It's going to take you many, many years to develop and refine your craft. You know, no college of education, no matter how perfect it is, can sufficiently prepare you for the realities of the classroom. So understand that you're going to have to take advantage to all the educational po possibilities that are out there for yourself. You know, that you're going to develop, you're going to improve, and you have to want to develop and improve. All right. so. Teacher advice about teaching writing. I think I tell them not to take it personally. I remember when I was a grad student, I got that first stack of essays. And I was really hopeful because I thought I'd done a pretty good job of teaching them and, and then I went through the stack and as I moved through I found that they didn't get the thesis statement as well as I thought and that some of them were writing kind of crazy things that I didn't understand and I said what did I do wrong? I taught them this stuff. Why aren't they using the stuff that I taught them? And I expended so much emotional energy and being frustrated because they didn't all get it in the way that I thought they would. And 
as I've grown as, a, as an instructor, I've, I've learned that that emotional energy is better spent not on being frustrated, but on trying to think of ways to help students to understand that just as writing is a process, growing as a writer is a process, and if they don't get something this time around, maybe they'll get it a little bit better next time around, and that's okay. The first thing I would say is don't try to teach like anybody else. Just be yourself and get to know your students and let them get to know you. Um, we've ha been in school as teachers, you have K through 12 and then four years and then maybe some beyond that when you walk into a classroom for the first time. So there are some fallback default positions that we'll take and hopefully we'll say, oh darn, I didn't want to do that because I'm like the teacher I didn't like. And some of our um, pedagogical um, theory will kick in and we'll start to begin to go through that reflective process of finding who we are as teachers because we don't walk into a classroom fully developed and we have to allow ourselves that space. Know your own value in terms of what you bring to the table. You do know pros. You may not know, you know, the whole thing about verbs that are followed by gerunds or infinitives. There's going to always be a question you don't know, but you do know how to produce and recognize good prose. And if you lead with that, with that's what I bring to the table, and you're comfortable with that. There's so much we don't know, but if you're comfortable with that, you'll always make a contribution. And that's what I tell them. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of the student who asks you what you don't know, because you'll get that every day. And that is actually the wonderful part of teaching. I'm a better writer myself for all the years I've spent working with students, because they have pushed me. We're excited because we know that we're going to have a special emphasis on writing centers, and that our two keynote speakers uh, will uh, show that. So. Uh, Amber Jensen is going to return to talk about uh, writing centers in the high school environment and we also are inviting Francis DeLauro from University of Sydney to talk about writing centers in the international context. So um, I, it's, it's definitely informative in terms of putting writing center practice uh, to work in high schools. Uh, Amber has come before and has a really good tool set of um, of advice on how to get started and then uh, Francis can talk to us about what composition looks like on an international stage.